but welcome and thank you for joining us for online academic orientation. This session is suited for students entering the commerce field. My name is Kamal and I'm a third year student specializing in finance and economics and I'm joined today with Professor Catherine Barrett who I would let further introduce herself and share what courses she's teaching. Hi everyone, so I'm an assistant professor in uh, Rotman Commerce and I am from the accounting department. So I teach exciting classes like introduction to financial accounting as well as introduction to managerial accounting where I had the pleasure of having Kamal as one of my students. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to, or paths will cross at some point, so I'll get to meet some of you in my classes. Okay, so starting off with our first question, do you have any general advice you would like to share with incoming students for each specific program, so specifically for the Rotman Commerce program? Yeah, absolutely. I think that students uh, at Rodman, one of the biggest decisions you'll have to make in first year is when you end your first year, you have to decide what, ma uh, what major you're going to do. So either you're going to do accounting, finance, or you're going to go in the management stream. So the first year is there for you to, to help guide you in this decision. And I think you should use the first year to really give a chance, come in with an open mind. One of the advantages you'll have in your first year is that you have an intro class in most of the disciplines. So you have intro to accounting, intro to finance, intro to organizational behavior. So use those classes to find out what is the profession about. Ask questions to your teacher, not only about the material, but what kind of career can I have in this field if I do decide to major uh, in, in this stream? And that's gonna be important for you. And when you go to your classes, try to come in with an open mind. So maybe you come into the accounting class thinking that's not gonna be fun because I, I get it. We're never portrayed as the, you know, the fun people in any movie or TV shows. But when you come in, try to have an open mind or if you think finance is too technical, well, again, try to figure out what this is uh, and use the classes and your teacher to help you make that decision. Okay, what a great answer. I think, thank you, Professor Brett, for an, an important, realizing the importance of being open. And so I wanna go deep and I wanna go, can you give us specifics about study habits or scheduling or how to handle the classes? Sure, um, I mean, in terms of studying, I often meet with first year students in office hours uh, to talk to them a little bit about how to study smart. And that's one thing that I think students have to transition. You come from high school where often there is one right answer and you have to learn the material so that you can just tell me what you've learned. But what you'll find in universities, we often transition from having uh, a more theory type based exam to having more of an analysis, integrating some small cases in there where, you know what, the answer is the answer, but we're more interested in your thought process. So when you study, it's not about learning the right answer, but when I say study smart, it's about learning the process, learning the steps of an analysis and when you study and you get something wrong, it's about going back and studying where you went wrong. What part of the process or the theory you didn't quite understand and maybe you go one way versus the other, rather than just trying to say, well, in this scenario, that's the right answer. So transitioning to this type of assignments and exam will definitely require a little bit of an adjustment on the part of the students, but if you understand that this is a change that needs to happen and you study with this in mind, I think those are the students that really do well in their transition. Okay, and so in a, in a similar line, what is one thing you think incoming students should remember during the first year of university? Well, first year of university is tough, right? You're probably in a new city, you're away from your family. I know you came from the Middle East, so it was an adjustment. You're away from your, your close circle. So you have to deal with that as well, right? School will be challenging and present its own uh, difficulties and require you to work, but try to keep a balance in there. Try to build a circle, meet some people, uh, I mean, network, find ways you can also decompress a little bit. Uh, school can become a little bit stressful. And I really think if you try to meet people in your college or in your dorm, try to build that support network that you had back home and you may not have here in Toronto, that's going to help you 
uh, navigate and do better. So again, try to keep that balance, uh, enroll yourself in activity, go out there, uh, and, and once again, right, you'll take care of your schoolwork, you'll work, but if you don't have that balance, I find students may, you know, a few months in find that this is a little bit difficult. Yeah, you're totally right. And so you mentioned the challenges. So I want to ask about that. What challenges do you think students, do you think Rotman Commerce students specifically face? So this is a common one, and I deal with this. Uh, as I said before, I teach 219, which is uh, a class a lot of students have in their first term in the fall. So they're just coming in, and we're one of the first uh, Rotman Commerce class that first year students have. And every year when I hand back the midterms, it's always a very, and you're laughing because you went through it, right? How did you feel when you got your RSM 219 midterm back? Oh, I was, so for me, it went well, but up until I got it, I was completely nervous. Yeah. Okay. But, and I'm glad it went well for you and I'm, I'm not surprised, but you have to anticipate that you were the valedictorian of your school. Every year I, I see, you know, Alex McKay tell us the new stats of uh, the admissions for Rodman and they go up every year to a point where I think last year I saw them and I was like, would I have even been able to come here if I was a student now? But, you know, luckily it was a different yeah. time. But you're used to getting top grades in your class. And you got here because you were the best at your school and you're used to seeing those A pluses. And what students have to realize now is that everyone in your class is that valedictorian. So we cannot give A pluses to everyone. We cannot give A's to everyone. And that's to, in a way to preserve the integrity of the grade and also to push students, right? This is, you're measuring up now. You have to level up, the bar got higher. So I don't say this to put pressure on you, but rather to make you aware of it. That, you know, you're probably going to get your midterms and you've seen A's all your life, but you might see some B's and there are B pluses. And that's okay. All right. You are still doing well. You will get through Rodman. The degree is worth a lot. So even if you don't have that 4.0, you have to adjust. And what I find difficult is those students who just kind of can't let go uh, and can't adjust to that. And, and if you just learn to anticipate and learn that it's okay. And I always hand back the midterms in 219 telling students that I didn't even get an A when I took introduction to financial accounting, yet they let me teach the class now. So it's also the grade is one thing, but you can learn from that grade. You can see that maybe you didn't get an A, but now you go back and you understand where you went wrong. And should you do the class again, you would have done better. So, so being open, taking the learning for what it is and, and not putting too much pressure on yourself. Great. Yeah, that's such an amazing answer. I totally agree for that. Yeah. And now I want to talk about something students might not know as much about, and those are office hours. So could you tell me what office hours are? And if a student finds office hours intimidating, what should they do? Okay, so office hours, I mean, teachers will have them every year, uh, every week, sorry, and they'll have them every week. And it's basically a drop-in session where you can come in and you can ask any questions about something in class that was covered that's not clear, or maybe you attempted some of the practice problem and you got stuck along the way. And instead of just sitting there by yourself for two hours trying to figure out what it is, well, you can use the office hours to go there and meet your teachers. Uh, overall, I find the office hours are not that busy. I find students now tend to be a little bit more independent in their studying, which in, is in a way is a little unfortunate because you do have the teacher available and ready to help you. Uh, and coming to office hours is a good way to meet your teachers as well. So again, you're kind of building that network and who knows when you need a letter of recommendation. It's hard for me when I have students and they were just sitting in my class. I had about 70 students and they're like, I need a recommendation letter. But those students who made the effort to, to come, well, you, you once again built those uh, connections and it will help you uh, progress in the class. Some teachers you'll see, and again, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but some teachers are fairly open in their uh, office hours. I know I, for once, am very welcoming if a teacher, if a student has questions about careers in accounting. So it's, it has nothing to do with what we've learned in class that week. It's not technical. But coming back to my first point about the importance of using your first year to 
figure out what your major should be? Well, sitting down with someone who's been in the field, who's worked at the big four, then you can get a little bit more insight about what you're signing up for. So you can also use the office hours for that. Now, finding office hours intimidating, I can understand, uh, and you'll have a range of professors. Some professors will be more friendly, more approachable, some will be less. And uh, I can understand how office hours are intimidating. I say, give it a try. And if for some reason it doesn't go well, or you find the teachers not that helpful, please don't rule out all office hours, okay? Just because you went to one office hours and maybe the professor wasn't really uh, key on explaining everything to you, please don't say, well, I'm never doing that again, because along the way, you'll find those teachers who really want to uh, use the office hours to help you get through uh, the class and succeed. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, in fact, remember going to your office hours and just receiving like having a positive experience there. So I definitely encourage all incoming students to try and just try first and see whether you're able to establish that connection with the professor because I was able to do that with Ms. Barrett and I had a great experience and my final went really well. So I'm really thankful for going for your office hours. Well, so, yeah. thank you. And it's good to like, the, we're there to help you learn. That's a big part of what we do. And I know I remember sometimes you would come in just because you had an assignment. You're like, well, I got the feedback, but could I have more? And, and I think, you know, I'm glad to hear that it went well, but you can really use that to build. And even though it went well, well, you know, you'll have a little bit more info to do even better next time. Yeah. So now I want to go into a different area and, and I'd like to ask you, would you encourage students to get involved in extracurriculars? A hundred percent. I think, you know, the, the one thing about the U of T campus, especially in the first year, you're very spread out. I find this is actually very challenging for the first year students because you'll have one class at Victoria, uh, Victoria College, one in Sydney Smith. So you're, you're a little bit scattered. And I find, and I mean, you feel free to jump in here, but it can feel like, you know, where's your home? Where, where do you fit in and where are you, where's your community? So by getting involved, that's where you're going to find your group. That's where you're going to find your friends and connect with those people. And I think that really is the best way to do that. I, I mean, if you have anything to add, because you've been through this. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, uh, like especially one, one important thing to know for Robin Commerce students is that in September, many of the Robin Commerce Students Associations, uh, certain groups uh, have their first year interns where you just take in for first year. So you have a great opportunity to you know, be involved and connect with upper years. And not only that, in U of T, there's just so many clubs you can join. So I definitely agree with Professor Barrett. There's just so many great opportunities to make friends and really just you know, form that community. As, as an international student myself, I was just trying to find that. And I found my community through my groups that I was a part of. So definitely, I agree with you there. And so finally, my last question to you is, what is one tip of success you would give to incoming students for Rockman Commerce? Uh, make the most of your time here, right? Take advantage of all the resources you have, whether that's the clubs, the teachers, uh, and, and really try to learn, right? And, and maybe coming back to some of the points I've made before, sometimes you may get a grade and feel like, well, I, I didn't quite get that. But even if you get a grade on an assignment and it's not the grade you were hoping for, you can still learn from that. Don't just walk away saying, well, organizational behavior isn't my thing. Go back to the teacher, ask them questions, uh, and you can learn from that. And at the end of the day, when I see my students graduating, if you have a 4.0 but you didn't do anything else, then it's hard for you to go to those recruiting events. You haven't been networking. The recruiters don't know you. So if you do have, you know, you need to get good grades, so work hard and, and do your best. But students will succeed when they're that well-rounded student. So having gotten involved, really taking in the learning, that will show in an interview. When we talk to you and if you really understood the concept, uh, the concepts, maybe it didn't translate quite to that A, but at the end of the day, if you took advantage of the office hours, if you took advantage of the review sessions that were given, that's where you'll walk away from here, feeling that you really are prepared and you have the tools to do well. Yeah, what, what a great answer. Once again, I totally agree with you. It's so important to know that uh, getting one band grade is not the end of the world and how you need to really focus on maintaining that balance and 
having good extracurricular involvement as well because landing that successful job isn't just about having a 4.0 it totally is not you really need to make sure you have a good network and you get that through being part of extracurriculars and like you mentioned once again you know our professors are there to help the office hours are there you can always go there for support and the numerous resources and development commerce program are also there so there's really everything you need to succeed and that's exactly what everyone here is happy to help you with and so with that advice, we are going to end this academic orientation and wish you all the best with your first year at St. Mike's and the University of Toronto. Absolutely. Welcome.